Hello comrades, it's the Finnish Bolshevik. The Finnish government has just announced that they are going to send an application for Finland to join NATO. Is the NATO membership gonna become a reality? Well, quite possibly, but time will tell. So the first question, should Finland join NATO? And I think the answer to anybody who is a Marxist, a socialist, a communist, an anti-imperialist, a democrat, a progressive, or anybody who favors world peace and opposes world war, the answer should obviously be hell no. Finland should not, under any circumstances, join NATO. The fact that Finland has remained non-aligned or neutral for such a long time has had a definite peaceful and stabilizing function in Northern Europe and for Europe in general. Finland has an extremely long land border with Russia, and it is one of the very few places on the Russian border where NATO does not have military bases, or more or less permanently stationed NATO forces. So whether you think that it's part of some kind of Western plan or not, the fact is that NATO has, in effect, objectively speaking, been surrounding Russia for years, and NATO at this point pretty much does surround Russia from almost all sides. And one of the few places where that hasn't happened yet is Finland. If Finland were to join NATO, it would tremendously increase hostilities and tension in the region and in Europe as a whole and in the world as a whole between the bloc of Russia and the bloc of the United States and the Western imperialists. People mainly focus on arguments like well, Russia is going to invade Finland because of some unexplained reason. They have been talking about the fact that Russia could invade Finland for um, half a century at least. It hasn't happened yet. And obviously there's two lines you could take regarding that. I would argue that if Finland has peaceful relations with its neighbors, then its neighbors wouldn't invade Finland. That seems pretty self-explanatory to me. But I know that some other people have taken the line of reasoning that uh, Finland should, for some fucking reason, just be completely hostile to its neighbor, in this case Russia, and since the permanent hostility is just something that we're not willing to give up, we should arm ourselves to the teeth and basically prepare for war. And for that reason, we should increase military spending and also join NATO, regardless of the consequences. Now, of course, these days there are also a lot of people who are afraid. They think that, okay, Russia is mad at us, therefore we should join NATO because NATO could protect us. But the fact is that that's illogical. Instead of keeping up hostilities, we should try to be friendly, have normal relations, and thus decrease the threat of war. And second of all, the idea that NATO could protect Finland is rather questionable. If there was a war between the Russian bloc and the NATO bloc, it's possible that the NATO bloc would win, but that in no way would save Finland. In that situation, in that scenario, Finland would be absolutely destroyed. It's completely unrealistic to imagine that if there was a war between Russia and NATO, that the front line would just stop at the Finnish border and it wouldn't go any further than that. No. Russia would immediately bomb and shell Finland into smithereens. Russian troops would most likely enter deep inside of Finland. There would be massive fighting on Finnish territory between Russian troops and Finnish troops or possibly Russian troops and Western NATO troops. And the fighting would devastate the entire Finnish country. Probably all the big cities would be completely bombed, completely flat, and it would be an unimaginable catastrophe. I mean, we could even be nuked, for all we know. The devastation would be unimaginable. There is no way that the war could end in some kind of way that wouldn't be absolutely devastating and terrible for this country. And I think everybody realizes that unless they are completely delusional. Because even if they think that Russia is militarily weak, which uh, is actually an argument that our media has been pushing lately, even in that case, they're clearly not so weak that they couldn't cause massive destruction to us. So even if NATO would win, and even if Finland could win, the destruction would still be unimaginable. So I would say the strongest argument of the pro-NATO side 
is that they claim if Finland joined NATO, then that would mean that Russia wouldn't dare to invade Finland. But that's not really a good argument either, because there is no clear indication that Russia has any immediate plans to invade Finland in any case. And yes, it is true that they probably would be more hesitant to attack a NATO country, in the sense that NATO is a strong opponent. But then again, if Finland isn't a NATO country, then possibly they would be hesitant to attack us in any case, because why would they attack us if we don't pose a threat to them? There's a lot of speculation, of course, but in any case, nobody should believe that there can just be permanent peace, and if everybody just joins NATO, then Russia will never attack anybody. Because that's not a realistic argument. Sooner or later, there is going to be another war, another big one. And it's most likely going to be between NATO and Russia and its allies. So the idea that if we just join NATO, that means we will never be attacked, is not a realistic argument. At best, people could claim that it's going to buy some time. But that's an insane gamble, because you don't know that. You don't know if it's going to buy us any time. In fact, I think joining NATO is just going to increase the tension and it's going to make a big war much, much more likely, and it's going to hasten the start of a new world war. So I don't buy that argument at all. And if we join NATO, then if a big war starts, that means we have to suffer the consequences entirely. Of course, because of our location, we couldn't avoid the consequences of a war in any case, but at least we wouldn't be so firmly locked into it. In other words, of course I oppose NATO on anti-imperialist grounds, but even if I didn't, I still wouldn't support Finland joining NATO, because NATO cannot protect us. Joining NATO is only going to make the threat of war more serious, it's gonna increase the threat of war, and even though if or when a big war starts, even though we couldn't avoid the consequences altogether regardless, we could still try to minimize our involvement, minimize the scale of the war. And we have to remember that in the era of imperialism, it's not possible to have permanent peace. However, it is possible to prevent certain specific wars. It is possible to prevent this war or that war, even though it's not possible to prevent all wars. It is possible to postpone this or that war. And it is possible to minimize the scale and destruction of this or that war. So, even though in imperialism war is, in a sense, inevitable until imperialism is overthrown, even then, it is extremely important that forces of peace try to prevent, postpone, and reduce the scale of all possible imperialist wars. So joining NATO would be a terrible idea. Now I will talk a little bit about the history of this question. In 2014, Finland signed the so-called host nation agreement with NATO, which basically is the same type of agreement that Finland signed back in the day with Nazi Germany. Back then, the decision allowed hundreds of thousands of German troops to remain stationed in Finland. Of course, the result of that was that when Finland started losing the war and then switched sides and joined the uh, Allies, turned against the Axis, then the German troops that were stationed here had to be driven out, and uh, on their way out, during the so-called Lapland War of 1946, they completely decimated the big population centers of northern Finland. So, that didn't turn out too great. But this agreement with NATO also now allows NATO troops to just hang out in Finland, and um, this memorandum, or this treaty, which is... It's actually of tremendous significance, but it was passed pretty much secretly and very undemocratically. There was no broad popular discussion about it, there was no referendum about it, there was no big discussion in the parliament. Instead, the head of the armed forces, the president, and um, a foreign policy uh, committee signed it. There was no vote, it wasn't signed by the parliament, wasn't even signed by the government, it was just uh, signed by a very small body. At that point, it was already clear that Finland wasn't truly neutral anymore, if it had ever been, but still not officially a NATO member. Now, of course, there has been a lot of talk about joining NATO. Historically, for decades, NATO 
membership has only been supported by about 30% of the population at best, and 70% or more have opposed NATO membership, historically. And as a result, none of the big Finnish parties have openly supported NATO, historically, which under current conditions might seem strange, but it is true. The Social Democrats, the Center Party, and all the other big parties, they've never said that they support NATO. At most, they have said that the option needs to be kept open. That's been like a favorite catchphrase, that the NATO door has to be kept open, or the NATO option has to be kept open. The Coalition Party did support NATO quite openly at one point, but even they largely adopted the position of not supporting it openly, just saying that the option needs to be kept open. Which basically means that these parties probably in reality always supported it, but it was such an unpopular position that they didn't want to admit it. The party which explicitly was very against NATO was the so-called Left Alliance Party. Now, however, since the Finnish capitalist class, the Finnish political leadership, and the Western imperialists in general have decided that Finland has to join NATO, it has been necessary for the Finnish capitalist parties to make changes. And as you may know, Finland currently has a supposedly very leftist government. So our government consists of the Social Democrats, the Center Party, the Green Party, the Left Alliance. So this government has consistently been uh, promoted as like, oh, it's so progressive, so leftist. All the ministers are young women instead of these old grumpy guys. But it is actually a completely social imperialist and social fascist government. The government has consistently supported a policy of war, imperialism, austerity, privatizations, although perhaps not as blatantly as the previous right-wing government did, but it still has, and the government has recently started supporting the uh, outright Nazi and fascist forces in Ukraine, and I'm, I'm not just talking about Ukraine in general, I'm talking about literally the Azov Battalion and actual fascists. This government the Finnish government, which claims to be so progressive, they now support imperialism and even fascism. But they use this very leftist and liberal rhetoric to justify it, and that's why they are social fascists and social imperialists. And that will become more evident as I go into the details. Of course, we already saw this last year, at the end of last year, when the government was trying to increase military spending and wanted to spend... 30 billion euros on new fighter jets, while at the same time they refuse to give more money to healthcare, they refuse to give any kind of uh, wage increases to doctors and nurses, even though nurses are paid very poorly and they were completely burned out by the COVID pandemic. The government refused to give those causes any money, instead they wanted to put an insane amount of money to new fighter jets from America. And the government is still proceeding with the uh, so-called social welfare and uh, healthcare reform, or SOTE, which is a massive reform which basically is going to lead and has already led to privatizations of healthcare. So this, even though this government pretends to be so leftist, they are in fact supporting militarism, cutting spending on uh, social programs, and they are proceeding with healthcare privatizations. Now, the reason that that doesn't seem uh, so shocking is because all of those policies uh, were policies that were pursued also by the previous right-wing government. So, the current government has not actually changed much. They've only continued the right-wing anti-people policies of the previous right-wing government. So, you know, that's kind of par for the course. Like, oh yeah, the Social Democrats, they claim they're leftists, but they just continue the right-wing policies of the libertarian conservatives, you know... So what? That's not uh, unusual. Um, oh yeah, they continue the militarist policies that were suggested by the conservatives and the nationalists, whatever, social democrats, they're liars, of course they're gonna do that. Not so surprising. But now lately it has gotten so much worse. Because now the government literally is supporting NATO, literally is supporting fascists, which even the previous right-wing governments have not done. So you can imagine that since our government claims to be leftist, but they're pushing such right-wing policies, they have to maintain a pretty strong propaganda campaign to justify themselves. 
and that's what they've been doing consistently. The government, of course, controls the state media, and the state media has been uh, trying to justify all this. The state media has been promoting NATO and uh, supporting fascism in Ukraine. And again, I'm not just talking about supporting Ukraine in general, I'm talking about supporting literally Azov Battalion and literal Stepan Bandera supporters. And the thing is that the leftist parties and the workers' movement and the peace movement have always been the ones who oppose NATO. So if we had a right-wing government right now, and the right-wing government was pushing for NATO, there might actually be a sizable amount of opposition to it. But that's not the case. We have a leftist government which is pushing for NATO. And as a result, leftist politicians, well, they're, they're in the government. They're not going to oppose themselves. Their supporters are a little bit mad at them, but they're also being uh, lied to and brainwashed and indoctrinated and manipulated. So... They don't very effectively oppose the government because they think it's a leftist government, they want to support it. This has been the most challenging for the Left Alliance Party because the Left Alliance Party has historically presented itself as more leftist than the Social Democrats. It's presented itself as the most leftist party and has historically always been against NATO. But now even they have started supporting NATO and they had to start doing it very gradually. So you can see the strategies that these parties use. Originally, they didn't say anything, except they started this campaign for why NATO might be good, but they still didn't flat out say that they support it. Recently, the uh, head of the Left Alliance Party stated that they are not going to leave the government if the government decides that they will join NATO. So that's a very sort of ambiguous statement, but basically it just means that they're fine with NATO. They no longer oppose it. In actual fact, they are trying to prevent any active resistance to NATO, any active opposition to NATO. Two days ago, the Finnish president, Sauli Niinistö, and the prime minister, Sanna Marin, they stated that they support joining NATO. That was the first definitive statement. Before that, they had consistently just said, we'll talk about it. But now, they say that they support joining NATO. And also on the same day, shockingly, the leader of the massive Finnish trade union organization known as the Industrial Union, Teollisuus Liitto, their leader signed a statement where he said that he and his, uh, the union supports the decision of the president and the prime minister to, to support joining NATO. And this is clearly coordinated. In an ideal situation, the union might say, no, we're gonna go on general strike if Finland decides to send an application to join NATO. We don't accept this, we're gonna go on a general strike. But the trade union leadership is corrupt, they have been bribed by the imperialists, and the unions are controlled by social democrats, who are also the leading party in the government right now. So the government has basically tried to liquidate and prevent any opposition to NATO. The right wing certainly is not gonna oppose it. Why would they? They support it. But the left wing also can't oppose it, because the left is in the government, and they're also supporting NATO. Now they've even gotten the trade unions to support NATO. So the only people who can oppose NATO are parties outside the government, and practically parties outside the parliament. Individual citizens, smaller groups, potentially the peace movement, individual members of trade unions and even individual chapters of trade unions but the union itself has completely betrayed the interests of the working class and has blatantly now endorsed imperialism so that's where we are right now i suppose when finland joined the eu there was a referendum about it that's the way it should go usually but in this case the government doesn't want to do that they are afraid that the people might vote the wrong way so there is not going to be a referendum about NATO. They're not going to ask the people. They're just going to have the government make the decision. Undemocratically. And of course the whole situation has been manipulated through the media and through various kinds of coercion and uh, scheming like I've explained. There were a couple of polls which were intended to justify Finland's entry into NATO. Because like I said... Historically, 70% of the population has opposed NATO membership. But now, all of a sudden, they claim, Oh, no, no, that's not the case. Everybody supports NATO. Well, how believable is that? 
I mean, of course the people have been frightened, they've been lied to, they've been manipulated, but at best that could achieve a temporary shift in people's opinions. Well, there were some polls. The polls had a sample size of 1000 people, which to me sounds small, but I read up on how statistics are made usually and how polls are made and they claim that that is a sufficient sample size. However, everything about those polls seems sketchy. The way the questions were formed is rather leading and manipulative. The way they selected people for the polls, everything about them seems shady as hell. And those polls basically say that a very narrow majority supports NATO. 53% support NATO. And the margin of error is 2.5%. Think about that. The margin of error is almost 3%, and the support is 53%. That is sketchy as hell. That is not a conclusive proof at all. And I don't even understand what this means, but it just says that the results were modified based on age, sex, and location, based on uh, census data. What does that mean? Then they started doing other polls because, you know, you have to understand that it sounds, it seems shady as hell that there's not going to be a referendum, they're not going to put this up to a vote. Well, why not? Because they're afraid that the people would vote in the wrong way. And of course, it's actually hilarious. They basically pulled a Russia gate. They said that if there was a vote, then Russia could somehow manipulate it. Well, how exactly? In Finland, we don't even use electronic voting. We literally use paper voting. We write on paper ballots. So how exactly could Russia manipulate it? Oh, uh, through Facebook trolls or something. Well, what, what are a few Facebook trolls in comparison to this massive state media apparatus which has now been bombarding people with pro-NATO propaganda? Even the trade unions are coerced into supporting NATO now. Russian Facebook trolls don't stand a chance against a propaganda campaign like that. But, yeah, they don't want to put it up to a vote. So then they started these uh, polls which were meant to justify that it's not going to be voted on, that there's not going to be a vote. And according to this uh, one poll by the state media, 48% say that there shouldn't be a referendum, and 41% say that there should be a referendum, and then 10% say that they don't know. Isn't that great? There's not going to be a referendum, there's only a shady poll. But no, no worries, to justify that, they just make another shady poll. Cool. Okay. And the president has stated that it's unnecessary to have a referendum, it's unnecessary to ask the people's opinion, and it's even unnecessary to do any more polls. The very limited polling that they've done is quite sufficient, and that it's fine that the government just decides. So the decision is going to be very undemocratic. They've just basically silenced anyone who would oppose it. I'll say a couple things about peace organizations. There's a traditional uh, peace organization in Finland called the Committee of 100, and the Finnish government has basically tried to co-opt peace organizations as much as possible because uh, the government has given them money. So the peace organizations can't really criticize the government all that freely since the government gives them money. So if, they, if they're too annoying and too critical, they're just gonna lose their funding. That's a problem. And I checked, and according to uh, the state budget, the Committee of 100 has lost its funding since 2017. So since 2017, the government hasn't been giving any more funding to this peace organization because who needs peace, right? They gotta stop funding all these peace organizations and they gotta start funding war organizations because we want war and not peace. Another traditional peace organization is the uh, Finnish uh, Peace Committee. They also have been receiving funding from the government but the latest data I could find was from 2015, so I'm not sure if they have lost their funding, but it's just another one of those things. So, okay, I'm about to conclude. So the latest development was that the president and the prime minister said that they support the idea of Finland joining NATO. That's the latest development. And then the Turkish president, Erdogan, he immediately replied and said that Finland and Sweden should not be welcome. That it's a bad idea if Finland and Sweden join NATO. And the Finnish foreign minister from the Green Party, Pekka Haavisto, 
is saying that uh, no don't worry we're gonna figure this out we're gonna figure this out and uh, according to the media the united states is now gonna contact erdogan and tell him no shut up dude so we'll see if the u.s manages to strong arm or erdogan into silence uh, why he makes such comments he claims that finland is too friendly with the kurds so he doesn't like finland but who knows if that's the actual reason it would be hilarious but also absolutely chilling if this ends up that Finland and Sweden try to join NATO, but then NATO won't accept us. Nobody even considered that possibility. Because what happened to Ukraine? Ukraine was all buddy-buddy with the West. Did the West help them? No. Sure, the West is giving them weapons now to prolong the war and to increase Russian casualties and to, um, you know, increase the destruction and the devastation. But they didn't do anything to prevent the war. They didn't do anything to protect Ukraine. So Ukraine is now completely fucked because of the West. And of course also because of Russia, but also because of the West. Because of both of them. The West just used Ukraine against Russia and just threw Ukraine to Russia to be turned into minced meat, basically. People should not trust the West. People should not think that, oh yeah, the West is gonna protect us. No, they didn't protect Ukraine. This could still end up in a situation where Finland just is super hostile to Russia, then tries to join NATO, and then NATO is like, oh yeah, yeah, sure, but then we don't actually even get in. And then Finland is used as some kind of provocation against Russia to try to get Russia to attack us or something. Because that's what the US really wants. I mean, the US would love if there was another Ukraine. Of course they would. The US would think that it's fantastic if Russia has these really annoying, costly wars on its borders, which result in anti-Russian sanctions, terrible PR, and a lot of hostility towards Russia. And they don't care at all that it would result in the complete devastation of Finland. So the West is definitely going to screw us over one way or another, and people should not trust them. Joining NATO would be a terrible idea, and everybody should oppose it. How do you oppose it? There will be demonstrations against NATO, so keep an eye out for that. If you are from here, post a comment below, I'll give you some stuff. If you're from Finland, tell your friends that NATO is bad. And lastly, if Finland does join NATO, we should still continue to oppose NATO. So it's not going to end at that. Even if we do join, then our goal will no longer be to stay out of NATO, but to leave NATO. That doesn't mean that we give up, that doesn't mean that our work for peace stops.